Discover craft ideas with personality, a felt owl, easy cartoons, a decoupage eye, and paint splat art, today on Hands On. Hands On is made possible by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmer's.com. Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. Make it fun crafts.com. Whether you're funny, happy, or just a little crazy, it's time to add a little personality to your crafting. Today is all about being unique. We begin with this cute felt owl. Anyone can make an owl, but can you make one with this much personality? I love it with its felty feathers and its cupcake paper eyes. Let's see what we need to make them. You're gonna start with some craft felt. You'll need two sheets of brown, this is some special printed felt, and we actually use the circles for eyes, some funky cupcake papers, pins, some light tan felt, buttons, the patterns from our website, chenille stem, an eight inch foam disc, some thick craft glue, tiny sharp scissors, and a pencil. Let's get going. The first thing you're gonna do is line your two pieces of brown felt up, just like so and you're gonna put a nice amount of glue onto the back of your disc or front, depending on which side you wanna put down. And I would put a little bit more on, but you get the idea. And you're just gonna flip it over, make sure your seams are together, and you're gonna set that in place so that the seam of the felt is kind of on the top uh, third of the foam disc. Now, next thing you're gonna do is leave this to dry, and then you're gonna cut a circle from the felt, leaving a two inch border. I'm gonna set this one aside, and I've got this ready to show you right here. At once you get your two inch border, approximately, you're gonna cut snips in so that when you bring the pieces up to cover the sides, you've got a nice um, edge going. And then when these dry, you're just gonna wanna pin, pin them or while they dry. And you would do that for the entire piece. Then once it's dry, you're gonna cut another circle from brown felt and glue it to the back with the same craft glue. Now let's get embellishing this owl so we get some personality. To make the eyes, Remember the special printed felt I showed you earlier. You can see I've got a pin right where we cut out his eye, like so. And then to finish him off, you just add a few snips and that gives him a fun little ruffly edge, just to add a little bit of texture. On top of the eyes, we've actually used bottle caps, water bottle caps. And you fill these entirely with thick, the thick glue and then you're gonna leave them to dry. And I'm not gonna take the time to show you this because it's so easy and, <clears throat> and they look like this. Now, if you don't have this special felt, it's no problem because these add a little bit of, um, you know, you can change the um, color of the eye by adding these on top. This is what the caps look like once they've dried. And then to finish them off, we're just gonna glue some button eyes in the center, like so. And then we'll finish gluing those to our felt eyes in a minute. 
The next thing we're going to do is we have this pattern on the website, but you're going to cut a little wedge of felt like I have here and make a slit in the center. And then you're going to line this up. So there's that top part of the, um, the, where the seams come together. Don't worry, that won't show in the end. And you're going to glue this piece right on top. It's really important to use a thick glue because when you're working with things like felt or fabric, you want a thick glue so it sits right on top and doesn't soak down in. Next thing we're going to add is the little cupcake paper embellishments. And to make those, you're just going to cut in to your cupcake paper and then around the diameter, inside diameter like so. And you can see now I can create these little wedge pieces, which we're going to use for the front feathers and around the eyes. So you're going to glue those like so. Don't worry about the edge yet. Let's get some more of these going on this side. And then for our eye pieces. I always use lots of glue to make sure everything holds because this piece is going to hang on the wall and we don't want pieces falling off. Now, that looks right so we can trim away the excess felt here and make it nice and flush with the edge of the disc. The next thing we're going to add is a little nose and I've just cut a little felt triangle for the nose and our bottle cap eyes. like so, and he's starting to come to life. Let me turn him around so I can show you. Now to make these really neat three-dimensional feathers, all you're going to do is cut little squares of felt. These are about two inches square. Put a little bit of glue. I have poked a hole into my felt, and then you're going to put a little bit of glue and smush them right in. Let me show you how I did that again. And you're just going to kind of put these randomly like so. And the tiny scissors help in cutting the initial hole. And then you use a dull pencil to open that up a little bit. And now we have a nice spot to do it to make the little three-dimensional feather. Let me show you again. Put that in the center and then stick that right down in. And you're going to make a, a, um, these on both sides right about here. We'll also add a few little breast feathers with our favorite cupcake liners. You want to start on the bottom because these are going to overlap in a pyramid style. And remember we have photos of this project on the website, but you would just keep adding these up the front. And then you can prop them up on an easel like we have here, or you can do the same thing where you cut a small slit in the back of the felt poke a hole in and then make a little U or loop with a Chanel stem, put some glue over your hole and then push this hanger in like so. And then leave that to dry. Let's take a look at the finished one. You can add some ears just like you did the feathers and you've got the sweetest little owl full of personality. Cartooning is so much fun. With some simple tips, you can make your own characters. Let me show you the ones I brought. This is actually of my dog, Rocker. We call him Rocky for short. Here he is as Super Rocky. And you can see we added a mask and a cape. And then, of course, his nemesis, Mr. Cat. And then I have some fish that like to have lots of birthday parties. To get started, you're going to need some really great cartooning materials. We'll start with the paper. There's lots of different cartoon papers available. There's some just like your traditional funny papers where you've got the little squares like and you can do a little story and then make notes on the side or you can use big comic strip boards like these or even bigger where you can do some character development and details on these large papers or even make your own trading cards with these tiny papers. 
Now, to actually draw with, you're going to need some nice mechanical pencils, permanent pens, brush coloring pens, and we're ready to get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is basically, when you look at your pet or animal or whatever you wanna draw, you wanna simplify the shape. And all that means is, if you look at my face, you might see an oval. So we're gonna start with something like that, except we're gonna draw my dog, Rocky. So Rocky's head's pretty round, and you're gonna uh, just start by kind of lightly drawing on the paper. You don't want to push down really hard because we're not really sure that we're definitely um, secure with our lines. So we've got our head. Now Rocky has a little bit of a snout, and his snout is kind of pointed because he's got a little bit of chihuahua in him, and he's got a little round nose on the top. Now this is a cartoon, so does it have to be exactly like Rocky? No, it doesn't. It's supposed to be fun and quirky. Well, go ahead and add his collar, and that's just a little strip. But the next thing we need is his body. He has got a really long body, so I'm gonna go with an oval like that. This looks like he ate a little bit too much for dinner. So we'll give him a little plump belly. Now, for his legs, he's got his hind legs, and he's sitting down, so I'm gonna draw kind of a oval that tapers at the bottom, and then on this side, you can't see so much of his leg, but it's still there, and we're gonna add it like that. And then he's got some paws that look like tiny circles, and don't forget his curly little tail that has lots of fur on it, so it's nice and fluffy. When you're done, you're gonna end up with something like this. And you can kind of look over your whole piece and really decide, yes, I want these lines, or no, I don't. Erase any lines that you don't want. And just brush them away. You can even use a paintbrush to brush them away, but we don't need that line in there. And you would just continue until you have something like this. Now for the fun part is adding lots of color. We're using these really neat pins that have kind of more of a paintbrush into them versus a really firm tip. So you can get nice brushy effects. And because I want this to get a little bit lighter around the back, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of pink for the back side of his collar. And, that, and you can overlap your colors. Do you see how that kind of blends right in so that you get a nice little shaded effect and makes it, gives it a little bit of depth? Let's look at this finished one over here on his collar. We need some pink for his ears. We can use that same pink and I'm making his ears a little bit darker. But I love these brushy tips because I feel like I'm painting. You can leave it scribbly or you can color it solid. And before I forget, I have to say, it takes a lot of practice when you're first starting out drawing. So don't worry if you make a few mistakes. I actually took classes on drawing in college and I still have to practice. So you would just go ahead and continue outlining all of your shapes that you've colored in. And since Rocky is white, I'm not gonna color his fur. Now I'm, I am gonna color in this little R. Because that's his initial. And you're gonna find um, patterns, you can find patterns for this Rocky cartoon online and you can make him plain like he looks when he wakes up or you can draw super rocky like he looks when he goes for a walk and remember when you first start drawing just look for those simple shapes in your pet like a round head triangles for the ears and little circles for the paws and really it's all about practicing if you're uncomfortable with getting started on your own pet We'll have lots of patterns on the website for how to draw a cat and a dog giving you ideas and you can just start with those and go from there. This giant eye is staring right at you. Perfect for Halloween or when you just want to add a little fright to every day. Isn't it kind of scary? 
Let's see what we need to make it. You'll need some tissue paper in blue, white, and black, the patterns for the eye on our website, glitter pens, clear school glue, a glass bowl, and I think we're ready to get started. Oh, you'll also need some paint brushes. Okay, to get started, we're just gonna cover the bowl in shredded white tissue paper. And I've pre-shredded this. Uh, all you need to do is tear it into little pieces. And you're gonna paint a coat of the clear glue onto the bowl, put the tissue paper on top, and then seal over it with the same glue. And you're just gonna repeat covering the whole glass bowl. You could use uh, a larger candy bowl to do this, but we liked this one because it was in the shape of an eyeball. And you would just keep repeating until you cover the whole bowl, and I've got one ready over here. Be sure to wash out your brush since you're using glue. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is with the patterns, cut the large blue circle out of the blue tissue paper. And I just sometimes, since the paper is so thin, I just lay the pattern on top of the tissue paper and cut it out. And I've got one ready right here. And then you're gonna repeat cutting the black pupil out. And then we're gonna put this on just like we did with the white tissue paper. And I've got a nice circle here. And you could also make, my eyes are brown, so I might make my another bowl in, with a brown eye or green eyes, you could use neon green tissue paper to make a really scary monster eye. And we need the pupil, right? Oop, don't worry if that happens, just peel it back up, take it off, and seal it down. Now, should your tissue paper tear, don't worry, you can just add another circle on top and nobody will ever know. Okay, now leave that to dry and you've got something like this. Now, to make it extra fun, we're gonna use these glitter pens to embellish around the pupil. And, well, let's start with the silver. The first thing you're gonna do is actually give the eye what we call a little highlight or sparkle. And to do that, you're just gonna use it as a liner like that to make a little half circle -ish shape. And the next thing we're gonna do is brush out some of the glitter around the eye to make the whole eye part sparkly, and you'll do that. Doesn't matter if you use the same paintbrush because it's all glue, and since the glue, glue is clear, it all mixed together. And we'll smooth that around. And then to add some veins or vessels, we're gonna just start and make waves out from the eyeball with our glitter pen. And you would just keep going all the way around. And then when you're finished, you can outline the black part. And the blue part. And you could make a couple of these to have a set of eyeballs. But you can fill them with candy at Halloween time or your favorite paint pens. I've got my eye on you and so does this bowl. Paint splats are always fun. What do you see in the paint? And what will you make out of it? We made a big valentine and a crab, although my mom thought it looked like a spider. So to get started, you're going to need some big tubes of paint, some crayons, paper, and you can use pattern, solids, or I'm using really big white paper today. Now to get started, let me set these aside because I wanna show you how this works. You're going to start out with your piece of paper folded in half. And you don't have to fold it so it's super crisp, just so you have a line dividing it. And you can fold it either way, uh, horizontally or um, vertically. Okay, now, you're only going to put paint on one half of the paper. And you can do this however you like. You can twirl it, and you can see I'm gently pushing out the paint. I'm not squeezing lots and lots out. You can put it in lines. You barely have to push. You can put polka dots. There it is. 
and you can kind of draw with the paint as you squeeze it out. You could also spread this on with a brush if you were a little nervous about squishing too much paint out. And I'm gonna add some more dots. Now, when you're happy with your pattern or design on this side, you can fold the non-paint side of the paper over on top of your paint. This way your paint won't run and, and smear down as you fold it. And then you're gonna just gently press down on top of your paper. And this is where we get into the splotting and splatting of the paint. So you can kind of rub it with your fingers. You can kind of make the paint do a little bit what you want it to do. And then are you ready for the big reveal? We're gonna open it up and you have this giant thing. I already think I see a lion, maybe. Do you see the ears? Or maybe a kitty cat, here's the face, his little nose, maybe some green cheeks and a crazy mane. So do you get the idea? Now that one, we just put the paint on in an abstract form. But you can also, let me do one more quick one. Let's use this orange piece of paper this time. I'm gonna fold our paper again. Just to show you how I made the heart, once you get some practice, you can kind of, let's not use that color paint on that same color paper. This yellow will show up a lot better, but I'm making a half of a heart and you could add some more doodles and dots around it. Put the paint paper on top, smooth it over with your fingers, open it up. Do you see the start of the heart? So you might have put your paint down a little bit further, but you get the idea. When you're ready and your paint is dry, I've got some ready. I did this apple tree, or I've got this piece that looks a little bit to me like a, an insect of sorts. So let's, let me put that one down. Let's get to making it look even more like what we see. I'm gonna use these crayons on top of the dried paint to embellish. And this is how I made the spider or crab look more so like those insects and animals. And you can kind of use your crayon to outline the um, already made paint splotches. Or you can color around the shapes. But you get the idea. Let's get another color in here. This I'm gonna make a love bug. So let's draw some antenna. I'm drawing some little hearts at the ends of my antenna. But you could keep embellishing with the crayons. And it's kind of neat because since the crayons are so hard, it picks up the texture of our paint splotches. But you would just keep coloring until you are happy and you have something like this. And you could frame it as is, or if you wanna make something like the Valentine, there are these really neat foam cutout pieces already. So this is the Valentine we made and we cut out. You can use a glue stick to put the piece onto the foam. And then you can make a bow out of ribbon and glue that on with some thick craft glue. Or this Easter egg is really fun. You can imagine all of the crazy Easter egg decorations you can make with this. But if you have some that are just like your crab or spider, you can make a portfolio uh, like this one I've done here to store all of my drawings. And to do this, you just have a um, piece of bifold foam core, like so. And then I use this really sturdy tape in a solid and a pattern. And I just put the tape starting on the inside and rolled it on around to the outside of the, um, of the actual board. And then seal to tie it up, I taped a piece of this plastic lacing. You can get this in all different colors to the outside so when I'm finished, I can take my drawings and put them in like this, wrap the plastic lacing around to the other side, and this is how it stays closed. To keep it definitely closed, you just wanna tie it in a bow, and now your paint splotch art is ready to show the world. Now we have a little bit more time left, so I wanna show you how to make an Easter egg. For this, we are going to fold our paper vertically. Since our Easter egg is so long, we need a longer design. So let's 
start with our fold. And be thinking of patterns that you might like to see on an Easter egg. My favorite is zigzags. So I'm going to make some zigzags with purple. And we're gonna go the full length. You may not use all of these designs on your paper for your design, but we're gonna have plenty end to end just in case we need them. And some pink polka dots. Isn't it crazy how this works? Your um, paint doesn't even have to be perfect. That's my favorite part about it. You can, you can make it however you like. How about some little lines down here too? It's a good idea to work on a protected surface because if your paint oozes out, you don't want to get any on your table. I've had that happen where my, I've put too much paint down and then when I go to smooth it out, it oozes out the sides and then I've got a mess on my hands. So put some, a protective work surface down or some newsprint. Let's open it up for our Easter egg decorations. Oh, it's perfect. So we would just cut this out and use a glue stick to adhere it to our blue foam egg. Thanks for watching today. Join us next week as we play dress up and make some creative costumes. See you soon. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids craft projects for every occasion, season, and even school subject are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1503. Hands-on is made possible by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmer's.com. Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. MakeItFunCrafts.com.